don't do that. Okay, well. Because we, we always get unmuted before. <laughs> okay, so we're on control here. New game. We'll see, uh, this, this opening sequence has some, uh, things that it says. We'll see it. Uh, Tomato Way, good to see you. Tomato Way's on Twitch. Aerosmith. This is gonna be weirder Evie. than usual. This is gonna be weirder be than out. usual. <laughs> that's, you that's, called me. that's, uh, all right. So here I am. I wish I could make the subtitles bigger. It's also interesting to hear her say, I, I can't be sometimes. helped. It's not a very common English phrase. I'm always glad to hear from you. But it is a very common just that translation of a Japanese phrase. I get my hopes up. So many times it's led to nothing. Giant concrete brutalist structure. Nothing. Yeah, and like the lines here don't it's make like, they don't add up to anything. It's just all these we like live in a room. And well, a so here she's wall. saying we live in a room, there's a poster on the wall. We stare at it and we think that's the whole world. The room and the poster. Now that sounds like an obvious reference to Plato's the cave to me. Place. Yeah. Looking at the shadows the on the wall, believing the that's the real person. world. Like in that movie, what is it called? The prison movie. I think that I think she's talking about the Shawshank Redemption the there. A cell and the picture. It's different for each of us. It can be beautiful or terrible. But we're all transfixed. But it's all a lie. Something to distract us from the truth. They're lying to us. We're lying to ourselves. The room's not the world. The world is much bigger and much stranger. There's a hole hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We yeah, she's definitely referencing Shawshank. Yeah, because they dug a hole. Yeah, the poster. Something and she, yeah. crawls mm -hmm. out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. But that That's weird because it's like... Nobody freaked out when they saw the Why hole and tried here? to forget it. <laughs> so um, I'm not sure what she's saying. Hello? Hello? Anyone here? Anyone here? No one at the reception desk. So it's uh, Federal Bureau of Control. Federal Bureau of Control. We got an eagle holding a double-sided key and a sword. That's interesting. Uh, because th those symbols all po pop up also a, a whole lot in, well, they're in Bioshock Infinite, the sword, the key, and the scroll, but I don't see a scroll here. Well, I mean, you have that Latin phrase written on that sort of scroll motif. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we also have a big triangle illuminating the sky, right? It's supposed to be the Eye of Providence, I, I would imagine that's... Uh, I what? think in this game it's something else. Maybe it's related okay. to the Eye of Providence, but uh, there's a bunch of things in this game that we'll be seeing over the next couple hours. So, uh, there's no one around. Got the metal Please detector. Wait here. I can sneak by. Look at that. Didn't even detect if I had metal. And there'll be lots of these. So, correspondence. Prohibited item reminders. Certain objects are not allowed inside the Bureau. Recent incidents have necessitated an issued reminder on prohibited materials. Listen. Thanks for the ice cream, Big Daddy Matt. Uh, unauthorized weapons, pagers, laptops, smart watches, smartphones, smart gaming devices, anything smart, number two pencils, any object, iconic representations of an archetypal concept, <laughs> um, all material under Bureau of Investigation is to be brought through, brought in through uh, the private entrances. Well, anyway, you know, one of the things that you saw maybe at the reception desk is that they have a typewriter there, and we're getting rid of all the, the laptops and anything smart, and number two pencils, 
Sounds very weird, very intriguing for our video game player. What what the heck could uh, this list, you know, why would they need any of that band? What do they all have? Yeah, well, yeah, what do they all have in common? Yeah. Like, why, you know, what does the number two pencil have to do with smart devices? Internal lockdown in effect. Building lockdown in effect. But yet, she walked right in. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... And the door opens, these doors are opening for us automatically, right? I don't know. And it closes only when we look away. So if we keep looking at it... Oh, well, I guess we saw it there. But the doors are opening automatically. But here you can see, you know, it's just these flat concrete walls. This is very sort of brutalist architecture. Yeah. Got a guy here. He pops up a whole lot. I don't remember who he is, but yeah, the, the scientist, the janitor, the janitor pops up a lot. And I guess that's the director. So let's remember this. Stairs. Oh, what's this? Oh, more things? Euro expenditures. Staffing, surveillance, data center initiative, initiative constructor, construction, janitorial costs, mold removal, HQ livability costs. Oh. But let's remember this. We come up the stairs. Scientist, janitor, director. Federal Bureau of Control. All these years, I've been looking for them, and they were hiding in plain sight. She's been looking for them. And this is one of those games where it doesn't tell you much. Like, so I'm playing, you're playing as this girl, and she's got motivations that you don't know about, right? Security order. Yeah, but no, sure, there's that. And then on top of it, it's like, they've been hiding in plain She's So, like, I, I don't really know what she means by that like the federal bureau of control so she's been looking for the federal bureau of control but it's this big building and you know like how could like unless she wasn't really looking she didn't know she was looking for the federal bureau of control until she realized oh what i'm looking for is the federal bureau of control like yeah. but well I, we'll I hear more about why they are able to hide in plain sight uh today um as you should know by now the r4 reports are due by the end of the week okay extensions for r4 r4s are mandatory okay I, I don't that doesn't mean much to me some of these reports are just Hello? i think um are they're they're sort of like mysterious and create intrigue other them are just kind of to provide legitimacy to the idea that this is a place that people work at. So here's the janitor. There you are. You are here about the job. Janitor's assistant. You need to go to the interview. Go that way to the elevator. Thanks. Elevator that way. Got it. Very good. I'm Ahti, the janitor, by the way. You work for me. You can say I sent you. If they don't hire you, they do. you are no element. There be work for the axe. Take them behind the sauna. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean. Loner yeah. <laughs> makes us come off weird. Ati the janitor is a friendly face in my book. Better than somebody with no face at all. <laughs> Think about it. No face. Did I say that out? Said, did my character say that out loud? You're thinking. If there's an axe murder around. I think it's it seems like my character's thinking things, and then Ati is responding to my thoughts verbally. So Ati says, so there's the entrance we came in, there's the stairs over there, scientist, elevator, director. 
Mm -hmm. So the building is different. This, I believe, is a bathroom, and it's always been here. So the building has shifted. The yeah. door was it, here. It moved to over here. The picture of the janitor got replaced with an, an elevator. elevator. And there's janitorial equipment in here. Press F. And the cell. And the poster. Up we go. I was 11 years old the first time I saw behind the poster. They told me I imagined it. I've been trying to pull it down ever since. Will you help? You may want snow oil for playing Disco Elysium. We're not, uh... I don't know if you caught the last stream, but, uh, I was done. I was done at the end of the last stream with that game. Uh, Eevee says he hasn't played the DV DLC for this game, but people were excited about it. Yeah, I don't know. John D... or oh, sorry, John Doe says this game is a mishmash of Twilight Zone and Twin Peaks. Or maybe something else I don't know about. <laughs> it's normal to be confused about this. I felt like there was actually quite a lot of parallels to um, the 1990s film Men in Black. And Can we'll see more of that. For a moment? You know what's on my mind. My baby brother, Dylan. So did you see that shimmer on the screen? Since the men of this bureau took him. She's talking to him, that. That shimmer on the screen made up of a bunch of triangles is what she was speaking to just now. Her brother has been missing for 17 years or something. You, you can see it's very interesting. You got the, the candy machine, only every packaging is pure white with black lettering describing what's in there. Like uh, pistachios. Or crackers. They got cups. And this... Come on. This is this is your armor. See? You run around like this and now you're armored. <laughs> oh, can't get in there. Break the game, why don't you? See the door just opens automatically. Annoying sound here. Approved terminology reminder. For any public facing material. While pending any notification of death related to the Willow AWE, please adhere to the following guidelines. Words and phrases to use. In the service of his or her country, regret, proud slash pride, will be remembered. Words and phrases to avoid. Alaska, scissors, blood, bleed, loss, apologies, sorry. Now, I think that's one of those notes that's really supposed to get your interest up, you know. What is, a, what is, what was, the Willow AWE? And why this specific language? Why the, the sort of manufactured, controlled language from the Bureau of Control? French, do not disturb. Barbara, I am not to be disturbed. Cancel all my appointments for the day for the rest of the week. I can't trust them, Barbara. Not a single one. Trench. Paranoid letter. We just heard a noise. Bang. Sounded like a gunshot. Oh, my armor fell off. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. You want me to pick it up? The murder weapon? Really? You can see oh, that shimmer right. on the screen. It's talking to her, but you can't hear it. Right. Well, it's it's actually pointing at the weapon. So you, you can see how the shimmer sort of points at it. 
It's actually kind of hard to see, but, uh... Yeah. It gets more obvious the closer you get. Yeah. See, we're broadcasting from the pyramid. And it's that upside-down triangle that we saw on the thing. Your application will be processed. You can see the cylinder was spinning on that gun. ...can cause or be results of AWE's altered world events, intrusions upon the perceived reality. Now, the service weapon is, of course, a prime example of an OOP, a very powerful one. Ingrained in the Bureau's DNA, a key component in our prime candidate program. Come out of that Russian roulette a winner and you, <laughs> you're it. Oh, look at this place. Where am I? So we put the gun up to our head and now we're here. It says this is our ritual slash challenge. And the ritual slash challenge is about living or dying on some level. The man on the ground, of course, did not pass. We can melee. Just got an extremely powerful melee, it seems. The same gun. There it is. Control the gun slash house, I believe it said. You get a lot of this sort of like language, manipulation, mysticism, confusing stuff, right? Okay. Now I have a gun. And if you shoot it, let's just shoot it out for a second. You see it sort of reforms itself before it can be shot again. That's how the ammo works. It sort of recharges. And I believe you do get uh, additional damage from headshots. But you can see the sort of ammo counter right below the uh, crosshair. And it just sort of recharges as you go. And you can actually, it's weird, you can, oh, hello you. You can switch which shoulder you're shooting over. She, she's always right-handed, but you can shoot over her right or left shoulder by pressing the R button, which is... Uh, yeah, I've never, I, I always like being able to, in third person, uh, switch uh, over the shoulder, but I've never liked it when they have, like, made the character ambidextrous and switch which side or which hand they use uh, when they switch the uh, shoulder cam. I just, I don't know, just a pet peeve. Just always bothered me. It's a general rule. I prefer first person than third person, if at all possible. The pyramid spoke to me, and it was just noise, and I understood every word. And this gun's alive. You know what? I'm happy. Happy to be here. Yeah, and that's sort of a weird statement. I don't know what quite to do with that right away, you know? She's Let's happy to be go. here. But, um... So, she, he... It sounds like he picked up this gun because the place was under attack... He needed to protect the place, so he picked up the gun and went through the trial, failed the trial, he's dead, we picked up the gun, passed the trial, and now here we are. Just got some wine bottles. Good place to pick up new armor. Come on. <laughs> Get in. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, there we go. 
Got new armor. What's going on out here? What is that? You can't let this happen. 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 You can't let this happen, Embargo. <laughs> well, luckily it didn't happen. Oh, and you can see the reticule changes color on these guys now. If I sit here, it'll recharge real quick. Oh, my armor came off. They shot my armor. One of the, uh, one of the things is gone. Okay, so now you can look in collectibles. So here's the case files for the weapon. OOP 1, Object of Power 1 KE. Uh, no unique procedure required for containment. The object's form is variable. When bound, the object allows. What the hell does this say? Uh, para utilitarians to blank. This object must only be bound by individuals seeking the role of. The object will determine. If rejected, the applicant is terminated. So, uh, that was what happened to him. This process is uh, dictated by, though there are cr criteria is unknown. Oh, dictated by some person or group, but that person or group's criteria is not known. Object was discovered in the oldest house in the room that is now used as the director's office. So I believe that was the director, that was his office, and it was in his room. Popular hypothesis, many forms throughout history. Excalibur. Oh, Mjolnir. Oh. The if objects of power are the convergence of forces based off their collective subconscious, then this may be the original manifestation of that event. So, like, this object of power we're holding may have been multiple objects of power throughout history. You know, there are objects of power through myth, things like Excalibur, Mjolnir, um, Spear of Destiny, right? Spear of Destiny is the spear that supposedly um, punctured uh, Jesus Christ when he was bound to the cross, that sort of thing. Um, also, whoops, if we go to collectibles, we can see this his guard that's what we just fought and it just says his corrupted security guards this is a security guard and you can see these lines like corruption lines so these are regular guards for the bureau of control but they've been uh they've been corrupted by the hiss did the Hiss target individuals with combat training? Does the Hiss have this level of cognitions? And then here's the director trench photograph, right? So that was the guy we saw dead. That was the guy who we had some sort of flashback to actually see his death when he engaged in the trial. Multimedia? Oh, this is the Objects of Power presentation. Oh, so there is a seek bar here that I can't use. And I also can't use directional keys. But, that's fine. We do have a map. You can hold tab to look at the map. A lot of notes all over the wall. Like, periodically you see... What? Like, a wall of notes. Like this? Secure line of communication. Oh, no, never mind. Guys, reach the hotline. Secure line of communication, reach the hotline. The hotline, says the dead man. And that is trench okay. talking. Okay. There's more bad guys around. More hiss 
guards. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Yeah, I do think graphically this game was done pretty well. Um... Yeah, I think it looks good. And uh, so my settings are on the lowest settings pretty much, so... Um... Right, that's pretty impressive, uh, I think. You can see my health in my lower left. Darn near died there. You'll also see... Oh, there's a guard there. Under assets, I get... I got something, but I don't have the clearance level for whatever it is. So, I assume at some other point in the game it'll be useful to me. And here you can see just people floating, not doing anything, not guards. Their weapons disappear. Their whole bodies disappear. These people... They disappear too. But they're... All over. And I don't want to get... Backstabbed, you know? So I'm gonna get rid of them. <laughs> Let's take a look around. Executive meeting minutes. Rising cost of AWE response. Altered world event. That's what we heard in the thing. Altered world event. Rising cost to respond to these altered world events. As well as mold eradication efforts. <laughs> All right. You know. Again, some of these things. Uh-oh. Get out here. All right. Just you a toilet. That toilet who's boss. Yeah, exactly. I think that's toilets. Yeah, disconnected from the floor even now too. That's how powerful these gunshots are. All right. What's this? Reminder: If you experience an unanticipated building shift, follow these simple steps. One: Search the room for any altered items or objects of power. Two. Carry the altered item or object of power to the nearest safe room. Three, wait for bureau staff to find you and the object. If there are no altered items or objects of power in the vicinity, then reach your supervisor via the nearest intercom and await further instructions. Thank you for your attention. So, building shifts. If a building shift happens, I think we encountered one of those already. Remember... Yeah. We, uh, that where we saw the janitor's portrait turned into an elevator and the door frames moved around. If you, if a building shift happens when you're not expecting one, look for an object of power like this, grab it, and bring it to some sort of room. Wait for someone to come pick it up. Some, you know, special person. You peon. You're not supposed to keep those objects yourself. Don't hitch a ride. Don't let the mold hit your ride. Yeah, don't let mold hit your ride. Perform daily body checks for foreign plant matter. Oh. And what's very annoying is those uh, those recordings, you actually have to sit at the machine to listen to the recording. This is not a game where you can play the recording and walk to your next location while listening. Dinner reservation, 7 p.m. Don't be late. Flowers are ready for you at the lobby reception. Remember, she's turning 46. I don't know if that's going to mean anything to us ever, but it, it is here. Oh, what's this? So this is shelter. Max occupancy, six persons. It's pretty big for emergency shelter for only six persons. Here's one of them. AWE Investigations. Here we can learn about the altered world events. For Marshall's eyes only. Marshall. We checked out the suspected AWE in Duluth, which is a city in Minnesota on the on Lake Superior. Uh, wasn't anything just like the house fire before this and the malfunctioning clothes dryer before that. My team is getting pretty sick of duds. We need to find a better way to sort fake AWEs from the real things. Or you need to rotate these field agents off for a bit. Anyway, we're en route to Sherman Ranch. Next one on the list. 
Let's hope it's livelier there. Hmm. Well, and we learned about the rising costs of AWE investigations. All the fake ones might have something to do with it. Okay, so that's another thing that it, we can't use. Hey, sound that tried to armor. invade me earlier. Come on. The hiss burrowing into everything in this place. Is the hiss your right. enemy? Now I got my armor. All right. It's our enemy. Our enemy. Me and the triangle thing. The babbles contagious. It burrows in like an infuriating melody that makes you hum it over and over. Kind of sounds like indoctrination. From Mass Effect. What's this? Oh, it's a radio. Oh! I broke my armor. Visitor evaluations. Okay. How to handle unscheduled visitors entering, entering the lobby, right? So they have an, an entire procedure written if somebody walks into the lobby. Hmm. Start with the following. Welcome to the Federal Bureau of Control, established in 1964, part of an a a effort to strengthen government relations. Relations with what? Um, blah, blah, blah. If they do not leave after the introduction, ask them these questions. Are you here to meet someone? Are you from New York City or just visiting? And three, how did you find this place? Remember, this is a huge concrete... Uh, brutalist building in New York City. Third question is, how did you find this place? If their answers are sufficiently harmless, explain that this is a secure federal office and they'll need to leave. If their answers seem blank, escort them to a private room, perform the Ganara psychological assessment. If their responses are within acceptable range of deviance, then blank immediately. Remember, there's no such thing as too suspicious. So, even though they're in this giant building in the middle of New York City, they're expecting people to actually not walk in. And it would be a weird thing if they did, and they need a special procedure for that. Urban Legends. This is one. Examination of paranatural topics. Urban Legends. Urban Legends are believed to affect the creation of of altered material, but also dictate the characteristics of an altered world event. So an urban legend changes an altered world event. Urban legends are understood as the modern evolution of, Jung, of Jung's uh, archetypes. We recognize certain blank informed by our own blank and popularized by our media. We have additionally proven that urban legends can be artificially blank in pop culture using blank. Our Bureau made anthology television program, so they got a television program sort of injecting urban legends into the culture and proving that it can change altered world events. Once the seeds are sown, human imagination exacerbates the details. Certain paranatural phenomena contain clear elements of popularized folklore, AWEs that only occur on blank, a pair of scissors that can consume human blank through two punctures on the blank. It's, it would almost sound like um, scissors that consume blood through the neck like a vampire. Um, mm -hmm. These details, living in the minds of so many, have given strength through belief. Urban legends are not just stories for children's. They are paranatural realities waiting to happen. Wow. Very interesting. Um, so, a number of people in the comments... In, in, the, uh, in the comments below, including Yiz, are asking, what's the verdict? Is this game subversive or not? Uh, I honestly don't know. I don't know much about this game. 
I get most games are going to be a mix, right? Uh, I know some people in this section have said, uh, Michael, so Michael K, he said that this turned into arguably, arguably the most anti-white game he's ever seen. Um, so I don't think we're going to get much of that in the first playthrough, in this first, you know, playthrough, but it's going to ramp up as far as I know. But, uh, it is free on the Epic Store. I wouldn't pay money for it. But, uh, if you go there today, you can get it for free. And here you, you can see a trend that we will see sometimes. Um, there's nothing here to prevent us from moving through. It's just an invisible wall. It's, uh, one of those annoying things about game design. Invisible walls instead of, I don't know, real walls. Uh-oh. But as a general rule, if we're playing it on Wednesday, it probably has some bad elements to it, right? The the Saturday streams is where we mess around with games that maybe have nothing bad to it. So this says Ranger Second Class. Pol Poloski? Poloski? Oh, he just knocked that over. Oh, there's, there's another person here. Didn't know that. Oh, what? Chopped me right as he came around the corner. Oh, Michael K says not this. Detroit become human. Oh, okay. Yeah, Detroit, uh, Detroit become human yeah, was, was the bad game. Uh, that was a crazy game. Yeah, this game, I don't know if I could seriously think that this was the most anti-white game ever created. Like, I mean, oh, man. I'm way back weird. here. Okay. Does it... it let me keep my stuff. Um, how about uh, Urban Legends? Is that in here? No? The hissing sound that tried to invade me oh, maybe earlier. it is in there, and I just missed it. Collectibles? Correspondence? Well, there's the visitor evaluation, so I guess I get to the keep my inventory. Burrowing into everything in this place. Let's hurry up. Get through this part. It's our enemy. So, you know, this is one thing you'll notice a lot when you play games. It's like, okay, this is one way, right? Whenever it sticks you into an arena through a one-way door, it's always, like, super obvious. Like, oh, here's your boss fight. Crouching is with the C key in this game. Oh my god. That's a lot of damage. Oop. Must cleanse control points. Well, that's right. There's you gotta go cleanse the control point. Yeah. Corrupt spreading. Cleanse the control point. Press F to cleanse the control point, guys. And that's how you do it. Frustrate yourself on the symbol. And he, remember about the unexpected building shifts? Well, here we're shifting it back to normal. Holy shit. You did it. We did it. Here's the triangle, right? Shelter. I can't tell you how happy I am to talk to somebody sane. The feeling's mutual. Yeah, I'm Pope, Emily Pope, a Dr. Darling's assistant. My turn. Should I lie? <laughs> Jesse Faden. I'm just visiting. I should have lied. Oh shit. You're the new director. Hold on. We're coming out.
Marlene says, this is like Max Payne 2, Director. but boring. <laughs> I loved Max Payne Call 1 and 2. Jesse. I was so disappointed <laughs> okay, when 3 came Jesse. out. I'm Emily. Oh, here's Emily. Look, somehow this hostile force, this hiss, that works. Somehow the hiss managed to infiltrate the building without any warning. And just like that, my name for it is official. The hiss. Like the sound of poison gas leaking in. We're in full lockdown. It seems to have spread everywhere and to everyone not protected by an HRA. And, extraordinarily, you. You are the director, and that makes you special by definition. Trench is no longer the director, obviously. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. This whole situation is just a lot. <laughs> Trench is dead. Shot. Ah. Uh. I found his body. And the gun. Do I tell her it looked like a suicide? The service weapon. Also, and this can sound crazy, but he keeps appearing to me, saying things. I probably wouldn't volunteer that information right off the bat. It's hard to make out, <laughs> but he told me to cleanse the control Dead people point. are speaking to me, by the way? Push it it might sound crazy, you know, I mean, the whole room aside from the... Bodies floating she in the room that. nearby. Yeah. Um, you entered the building it, when it was already in the lockdown before you became the new director? How? I'm not ready to tell her about you yet. A janitor let me in. <laughs> I love it. This is fucking unbelievable. It's. I can't even. Ugh, look, Jesse, I have a million. There's something very stiff about these characters. You probably have a million more. This is. Like, do you know my brother Dylan? Dylan. Not yet. Little brother got missing but 17 years ago or something. I need to ask you to do first. If you can cleanse a control point, then you can maybe cure those infected or possessed by the hiss. Because if that's oh. possible, our options are very different. Well, I've just been shooting them up Holy until God. now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know her, but I like her already. She's the opposite of the faceless agency I've blamed for what happened to me for so long. But I can't trust her yet. Or rather, the bureau she's a part of. Yes. I can try. I'm speaking for you, of course. We can try it together. Okay. Merlin says, what is this writing and acting? I don't know. It's... Some parts of it seems okay, and other parts is out. kind of stiff. Everything. The animations, the facial expressions, and the voice delivery. But, uh, here we go. Ha, uh, me, ha, uh, hey. Ah. You're free now. Didn't work. This has burrowed too deep. Yeah, see, it was right to shoot out, him. Rips them apart. Okay, let's see, let's let's see what 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 are, what are they leave in this room? Is there anything in is there anything in here for me? She's yelling over here. Oh no no no! I gotta look in your room first. Control points. Oh, there's his agents. These are just regular everyday people. Uh, his agents maintain their human appearance, undergoing no physical transformation. Uh, no aggressive behavior. They seem only they see they only seem interested in vocalizing the strange incantation ad infinitum. Perhaps the vessels are only meant to propagate the hiss corruption, like spores or Wi-Fi boosters, <laughs> or their cocoons, maybe to enter the next stage of the evolution. So, um, I think it's probably still good to shoot him. We got a couple guys here. They're not doing anything. You can't talk to them. You only talk to your girl here. I can't cleanse them. I saw. It was worth a shot. Thank you, Director. Jesse. So I'm the director. After all, I passed the I'm gonna tell her why ritual I'm slash challenge presented by the object of power. Listen. The Bureau was involved in an incident in my hometown ordinary 17 years ago 
The Bureau came in and covered the whole thing up. I've been looking for this place for a long time. He's been looking for this that's place. That's enough. Maybe that's too much already. I can't tell her about Dylan and the rest yet. I've seen mentions of an altered world event case dealing with ordinary. You were at Ground Zero as a child? Ground Zero? It was one of the big ones, and before my time. And very classified. I can try to dig out some old files for you. My boss, Casper Darling, would know, but he's missing. I think he knew this was coming, or suspected. He came up with the HRAs, the Hedron Resonance Amplifiers. I think they're what saved us, or a few of us. And Director Trench would know. Trench, the ghost, or whatever he is, he mentioned something called the hotline. Said I should find it. It's another object of power, like the gun, an old Bakelite telephone. A direct line of communication between the director and the board. Maybe he can talk to you more clearly through that. I mean, Trench has years and years of experience. He might know how to destroy the hiss. Where is the hotline? It's kept in the communications department through the mailroom. It's part of this sector, so we can access it even with the lockdown in place. We'll get the door open for you. Okay, that's my next stop. That's Tomasi's department. He's the head of communications. I don't think he had an HRA. He kind of made a point about not wearing one earlier. Keep an eye out. They call me the director. But that's not me. I'm not a director type. I'm not a leader. Why am I here? I think you already know. Yes, I came for my brother, but there are other reasons, too. I said I was looking for answers, but I might never understand them. I'm not looking for proof. This is already it. More than enough. No matter what they told me all those years, I know it's real now. I didn't imagine this. I want to be a part of this world. What scares me shitless is that I finally found it. Only to see the hiss destroy it all. You got the phone on that little table, the chair. She's talking about how she's found this new, this separate world. This new world that's been hidden away from her. Right? That she wants to be a part of. I'm going to talk to her about a couple more things here. I can talk to this character. People in the chat are saying that some of these females look kind of like men. Um, once again, we see this over and over and over in these games that they consistently give women male hairlines. That's one of the big things. See you back here when jaw lines. Look, look at both of their look at look Thanks, at the Emily. main protagonist's jawline. I mean, like she's got. I mean, for a woman, it's a fairly chiseled jaw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a very strong jawline on the character, which tends to look more masculine. But also, uh, we can't see our hairline on our character that well. But on her, we can see the hairline a little bit better, and it's not a super feminine hairline. It looks more like a man. Let's talk to her though. There's some things we can talk the to her about. The hotline should be in the communications department. The oldest house. We heard about that. The oldest house. That's where the gun was found. And the gun was found in what's now the director's office. So this is the oldest house. You mentioned the oldest house. What is it? This building, the Bureau Headquarters, the oldest house, is a shifting place. You've seen it. It transcends its physical limits. I've been to New York a few times. How didn't I notice this place? It's an attribute of the building. This is a place of power. The oldest house doesn't like attention, so unless you're purposely trying to find it, you don't. Which is perfect for us. The work we do here is essential, but unstable. The Bureau prefers not to be noticed. 
And we need strong walls to make sure nothing gets out. So without you, I never would have found the front door. Okay. So she, when she said, without you, I never would have found the front door, that's not part of this conversation. That was a thought to her sort of triangle thing, right? That she's got going on. So that's why they can have this giant brutalist structure in the middle of New York City, and no one knows about it. Because you can only find it if you're already seeking it out. So imagine if you were seek. Imagine if, like, somehow you found a building that no one else could find, but all you had to do was tell other people about it to get them to seek it out, and then they could come join you in that building and form your organization. That's how the... That's how the um, Department of Control set up here in this crazy building. So you have this crazy building in the middle of a city. This city has secrets of a real world being hidden from everyone. To me, this sounds like the 1990s film Men in Black. If you remember, there was a giant building in the middle of a city. Will Smith went there, took a test, you know, sort of like these these sort of featureless tables, took a test on it in these egg-shaped chairs, and then when he went through the door, he encountered all the aliens of the galaxy, all in this room, and, you know, they are having coffee and whatnot. This is what our character is going through, too, here, entering the real world that's been hidden away in plain sight. That's that's my thing. Like I, I feel like these are very similar. Yeah, I don't know. Director Trench. Have... This Trench guy, I keep hearing him in my head. Is he a ghost, haunting me? I doubt we're talking about a ghost in the traditional sense, but an echo may be. See, if he was killed by the service weapon, your gun. Maybe it's his final thoughts recorded by the bullet in his brain, like a, a deep space probe sending back oh, data. That, that totally makes sense. Uh, I, that's I just totally a get hypothesis it. on my part. I need the gun to research it. <laughs> but you better hold on to that, given the circumstances. I think I will. I mean, as opposed yeah. to him being a traditional ghost, I mean, this makes so much more sense. It's exactly. just so much more fluid and logical. It, well, and the thing is, we, we, we know that urban legends is. affect actual altered events, so... You would think ghosts might be kind of real in this timeline at this point. Actual altered events. Actual yeah. altered Altered events. world events. All right. Objects of power. Can you tell me what an object of power is exactly? This is all... Like privilege. <laughs> well, new to me. <laughs> Don't worry. I love going over the basics. So objects of power are mundane objects that house paranatural energies and have developed a link to the astral plane and can thus be controlled, which is what differentiates them from altered items, which are still housings of paranatural forces, but are more volatile and cannot be bound in the peri-utilitarian sense. Got it? Did she memorize this? Yes. That was a speech. Got I'm it. pretty sure that was memorized. Thanks. Um, Hedron... Resonance amplifier, the thing on her uh, chest there. So HRA stop you from becoming Hiss? Well, it seems that way. I mean, I hadn't even heard of an HRA until a few weeks ago when Dr. Darling started handing them out. Well, I began analyzing mine as soon as I got it. I mean, each one it seems to emit a powerful short-range frequency way beyond anything I've ever seen. Doesn't the timing seem suspicious? I thought that too. Dr. Darling usually likes to unveil his latest breakthrough in big presentations. With these, he just passed them out. Yeah, his behavior makes me wonder what exactly he knew. Yes, that's such suspicious behavior given everything else that apparently goes on in this, this place. I mean, that would totally stand out to me. Origin of the hiss, <laughs> the hiss that's infecting this place. Where did the hiss come from? I'm not sure. You said the hiss was here when you entered. Did you see anything like that outside before you came in? No. No, just inside. The source is internal, then. See, the oldest house is a sprawling complex with openings to other places as well. 
I don't even know where to start looking. But in the context, it's good news. The lockdown holds. The hiss escaping the building would be the end. Pretty shitty world out there if you ask me, but I wouldn't want the hiss to destroy it. I'm with you on that, Emily. It's a shitty world out there? Okay. I don't know what their her problem is with the outside world. Thanks, Emily. I'm sure I'll have more questions soon. Just let me know. I don't I don't know if um this game cuz I don't remember this game very well at all. I don't know if she was just pushing this, but it seems like a lot of games and a lot of media in general just always assume like this basic premise that everyone's going to agree with it. Like, yeah, the world's shit. You know, like yeah. uh and it's just like I mean, really is it? It's like you know, not not that I want to go on some rant about how, you know, oh, the Gilded Age was actually wonderful. Well, actually, it was, you know, absolutely terrible. But, um, you know, uh, there's more than one way to look at it. And, uh, yeah, it just strikes to me as is, is, uh, interesting that so many people today just start everything with the basic premise of, like, the world there is a completely is terrible, shitty place. Message. Mm hmm Personal mod. Health boost. Oh, we got a weapon mod, too. Rate of fire increase. Oh, we got three personal mods. Uh, health. Health recovery per element pickup. Oh, we have two of these, and one's better. Oh, you can deconstruct them. Oh, let's give more health. Felt like I died pretty quick when I got shot. Yeah. Get rid of you. Um, Shrilling but, um... says show, don't tell. Now that for 60 minutes the character has been sitting around a table and explaining everything, well, it's one of those situations where I think it's difficult for a game developer, right? Uh, so we just got to set, sit down with that character over there and talk about a bunch of stuff, which did illuminate some stuff. But at the end of the day, we still really don't know dick about what's happening in this no, world or even why all. the character not is here. At all. Not so at all. now the, the game developers could have written even more dialogue. You know, so we could get that all explained, but then we would be sitting at that table for two hours, right? So, it's one of those situations where if the care, if the developers gave us enough dialogue to explain this entire sort of, you know, twist and turn story they want to tell us, uh, it's like giving the gamer enough rope to hang themselves with, or giving the gamer enough dialogue to bore themselves with, kind of deal. You know, I feel like it's not necessarily easy for them. Um, that being said, you know, I feel like on some level, games that start you off with very little information and bring you down their little railroad of twists and turns, it feels today more and more and more contrived with every game that does it. Like, all right, hit me what, with the next else, twist game. Else? Like, maybe if I played through this game again, which I'm not going to do, uh, and because uh, I think I feel like I would be more attentive this time, uh, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I would say that, like, from what I, anyway, from what I remember of this game, it seems like if this game didn't have very good aesthetics, very good at mechanics, very good physics, like, like mechanically and aesthetically, this is a good game. It's, it's well made, doesn't have a lot of bugs, like, I mean, it's. You know, it's got interesting mechanics. I, I feel like if none of that were there, like the the story, and like all the dialogues and like like all of that, like nobody would play this game. They would just be like, "What is this? We're done." Like, um, well, I think what they've presented so far and the idea of like the urban legends that people believe in represent paranatural realities and potentialities that can come into existence and affect our real world, creating objects of power, places of power, and altered items. I mean, I think that's a cool setting. I think that's a cool thing they did there. Um, and let me just bring this up well, real quick, too. Yeah. Here's the awards this game has been given or nominated yeah. for. They put this on their a website. Lot. There's a, a lot, lot of them. So these top ones are Game Developers Choice Awards, winner for best technology, winner for best visual art, winner for best audio, finalist for game of the year, and finalist for best narrative. And then you have all these IGN. That I'm shocked about. That surprises me. 
It really does. And I mean, again, maybe, maybe you know, maybe I don't got the big brain. <laughs> maybe I just don't get it. IGN says best video game story, uh, best art design, best action adventure game. They also list best uh, game of the year from IGN. Uh, Critics' Choice, Game of the Year, Another Game of the Year, Art Design, Runner-Up, Game of the Year, Best Setting, Best Story, Another Game of the Year, Another, oh, that's the IGN Game of the Year again, Action Game of the Year, Outstanding Achievement in Art Direction, Outstanding Achievement in Game Direction, and Outstanding Achievement in Original Music Composition. And I really haven't heard much music, and also... BAFTA nominee games nominated for 11 awards. So, I mean, like, this is a highly acclaimed game. It came out in 2019, right? So... It was pretty recent, like, yeah. Uh, so, two, three years ago. Big deal. Big deal, this game. We're playing a big deal game. Let's look around here. Who's down here? Show yourselves. Uh-oh. Red hallway. Red means bad. Oh my god. It's, it's overpowering I, I, I don't know if you can tell, lower left, I was taking damage in there. Yeah. I, I just feel like, it, you know... Uh, I just feel like this is really, really overrated. <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, like I said, I think the setting itself is a cool setting. You know, I think, like, um... If you were to take the ideas that we've encountered so far, the ideas of urban legends creating paranatural po uh, potentialities in our world, and manifesting objects of power and altered objects that people can use, or the player can use, that sounds like something you should incorporate in your next Dungeons & Dragons campaign. <laughs> I mean, I think it could be a lot of fun. Okay, what did we get? Yeah, I don't Co know. Collectibles. Really strike my fancy. Travel costs. Uh, someone stayed at a bunch of hotels, paid 800, 900 bucks, or oh, 800 bucks for accommodations. Paid $300 at the minibar. Again, what request that you give us budget to get two rooms each night. Ancient Rowley and myself are very tired of sleeping in the same room. Okay. So, uh, that goes back to the AWE increasing costs. They're trying to decrease the cost. I'll be right <clears throat> back. Okay. Uh, loadout? I got a new health boost. No, no, what is this? Energy recovery speed. I don't think I need that, do I? Assets? I don't I can't use any of these yet. Um Dark Storm says BAFTA is paused. Yeah, I, I I do believe so. I don't really know much about him other than I don't have much respect for him. Uh Drathia says, Hey fellas, I'm curious. What you'll think of this game, I remember enjoying the gameplay, more so on PC than the PS4, because the environmental effects made the poor console chug. I've actually... So I'm on a laptop, and I've had a couple chugging moments in test playing this game, so we might see those on stream. Um, like, the game would just slow down. Like, the actual game speed would slow down to deal with this sort of, like, crazy chugging. And it wasn't, like, some sort of artistic effect. But, uh... <clears throat> So far, I like the idea. Um, what's this say? Due to current, due to recent fluctuations in the nearest control point, this area's stability has been downgraded to yellow. The the uh, reference chart: green stable, yellow possibility of unanticipated building shifts, orange high likelihood of anticipated building shifts, and red is frequent unanticipated building shifts. And you're not allowed to have a laptop or a smart anything in here. Highly likely unanticipated. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Gotta hear you. Am I hitting an invisible wall? Oh, dead letters. Okay, dead letters. Um, 
I do like the idea of uh, urban legends and mythologies and things like that um, interacting with real life. Um, I mean, because, you know, that's that's what happens in real life. You know? like, uh, people just, you know, they're just kind of thinking about it in a creative new way here. Oh, he was so far away I couldn't see his health bar when I shot him. So there is a range in which you can see health bars. And it's not as far as not you can actually to shoot. Pistol. <laughs> yeah. What's this? More loot. You've got these loot crates. Shatter recoil efficiency. Okay. Oh my god. There's a thing here. And it's a beefy one. Oh my goodness. Get out of here, you. I was not expecting this stuff to sneak up on me in there. I normally get to loot in peace in these games, you know? After I go for crate box after crate box. There's a lot of these guys here. You got, you got owned by a highly likely unanticipated event. Something up there? Oh, it's got my my little thing is directing think, me up I think, there. I think that's the control point that you have yeah. to cleanse. Or... But I need to loot things. What's this? Dead letter approval. And dead letter is what we saw on screen when we came in here. Greetings, Director Trench, the dead man, whose job we now have, apparently. Do we get a salary? Uh, I'd like to thank you for approving my request for the Dead Letters Archive. Cataloging the Bureau's collection of delinquent mail will provide an extremely handy database that research terms can use to search for any connections or related topics found among the letters. Aside from the more functional purposes, the archive will allow us to preserve these windows into authentic human encounters with the paranatural world. The letters came to us from various places and times gathered by Postal Service as undeliverable. The Bureau is the perfect home for them. I realize not all letters contain accounts of genuine paranatural events, but even the erroneous ones will allow us insight into how the unknown is perceived by real people. And again, if the, if the unknown is perceived in a way that creates an urban legend, then it becomes a potentiality, doesn't it? Of course, th I will first compile. Oh, done. Grrr. I will first compile a system to allow us to analyze the letters for any information or suspected connections with altered world events and other altered materials. Can't wait to delve into my dead letters. Well, that guy's probably one of the floating bodies I shot around here. What is that noise? That might be him. Oh, more stuff. Undefined reading. Alright, press F to cleanse the control point. Well, there we go. Navigate through the communications department. And also, you can... Yeah, you can fa fast travel. Yeah. So, like, we're here and we can go to here. All right. That's our fast travel options. What's this? Oh, we can't go through here. We're not... We don't have clearance. What are we the director of, exactly? Director of not having, having no access to anything? Oh! Just look it's really it. weird the it angle we have to watch this. It's artistic. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA, the disc held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disc, of course, but one exactly like it. A perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on, and they did. 
we don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, OP. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. I don't know why I can't look at the screen dead on, but uh, there's a Soviet... Oh, gee, it's artistic. <laughs> there's a Soviet 8-inch floppy diskette with launch codes on it, but what it really lets you do is launch things telekinetically if you have the diskette, which we don't. Wait a second, should we be going up or down? What's up here? Besides these people. People. What's that? Oh, just part of the air vent? Door I can't go through? Oh, uh, a loot crate. That's what's up here. I got something I can't use. The, uh... I'm the director. I can do what I want. Uh, Schmerling says, Urban legends manifesting into entities and artifacts is cool. Shooting the same... The samey enemies... And samey empty rooms is not as an interesting way to explore it. Yeah, maybe not. Now, John says you can watch the videos in the menu. Yeah, that's true, but will it show me the same thing? Whoops, that's not the right menu. This is the menu. Okay. Multimedia. Floppy disk. Oh, wow! Just you can actually watch it without it being normally. like yeah <laughs> without an extreme like extreme angle <laughs> yeah an extreme angle on a CRT television okay well i mean we all saw it though so but that is good to know the next time i pick up some video file and it's watching me it's making me do it at an extreme angle I'll... this just hit this guy oh god it's more of that thing Hello? My health go down over here? No, but it makes it... Makes the noise of like... Jeez. Just supposed to bother you enough for you'll leave. Hey! Safe room. What's in here? Maybe, maybe if uh, as nationalists we just walked around doing that all day, everybody would just leave us alone. I've seen people do that on the street. Both the like the MAGA people and the social justice warrior people, they just scream at each other. Did you see that one where they were like barking at each other or something? No. Oh god, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's awful. Okay, what did I get there? Unstable area notice. Oh, wait, no, that's not what it. A uh, book club. I usually don't read a lot of sci-fi, but as far as space opera goes, this was all right. Okay, the catchphrase got really annoying fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I sided with the fixers because they had the coolest tech and their motives made the most sense to me. Kind of ruined the whole thing for me when my favorite character got killed even halfway through the story by getting a battery cylinder launched into his face. Okay, well. So they're having a book club. And that was page two out of five of his review for the book club. Oh my god. Oh! So, this seems to me like the thing we just learned about. The 8-inch floppy diskette that can launch things telekinetically. But at the time of that old video, they were only able to launch a couple pencils and, most impressively, a cup. And it seems like it's much more powerful now. I can launch a cup. It, it certainly can, but uh, it blew right through all the sheet metal on that. Uh, I can launch pencils too. Yeah? Can you blast through sheet metal when you launch the cup? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I can't. <laughs> it looks like a tornado of a little whirlwind of uh, just crap on the ground. I don't know. OK, 
okay. Yeah, I mean, this is one thing that I think people were like really impressed with, uh, which is the physics. And I, I do think that this is a game that they did, they did a really good job on the physics. It doesn't actually look like she's struggling. It looks like, it's like bad miming. Right. Some, well, this is motion capture. That's just bad yeah. acting. To launch slash telekinesis. He just to well, believe I mean, like, that. To yeah. How do you really do a good here. job of like acting out that kind of scene? I mean, that don't, have, have you seen you like would. really professional mimes do that? Like look like they're no. actually struggling to do something? Like no. it takes a lot of skill. Are they really the I'm sure it does. I've just, I don't know. I've never seen a convincing job. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now we're in a similar situation with this object of power. We're in a trial. I don't know if this one can kill us if we fail the trial, because obviously the gun kills the people who fail its trial. Okay. What's interesting, hold E to grab an eye-lighted object. Release E to launch. That's what the that's what the directions say. Um, that's not how this works. You, like, I've already, like, I just released E. It's not going anywhere. You have to press E a second time. So it says hold and release. So hold and release. Nothing happens, right? So it's, it's it should just say press yeah. E to grab something, well, press E again to menu option. It. Maybe there's a menu option that got changed. Like maybe normally... But I didn't change any controls. Like, this, right. I left it on the default. So you right. would think the default directions and the default sure. controls would match up. Not uh, agreed. the default directions with non-default controls. Right. Go into the menu and see if there is an option, though, real quick. If, if, you, if you don't mind. I mean, you don't have to. But, yeah. Options. I am curious. Controls. Controls. Um, launch. Eee, what the hell is that? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like there really is. Uh, yeah. So they just done. They just done effed up. I don't know. It's it just they just don't match up. Yeah, it's just uh, not a, a correctly worded uh, tutorial. Yeah, that's it's really bad when your tutorials uh, literally mislead the players on how to play the game. Game Especially the year, in a though. game that's like so bizarre like this, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's just like... Confusing enough. I mean, again, I feel like, like, I don't know what the Metacritic score was, was on this. I mean, I, I, I know it wasn't bad. I know like a lot of people like this. Like this was not poorly received by anybody. But I, I kind of want to sit here and think that uh, critics got carried away with this and then the critics getting carried away with this somehow. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like. There are a lot of good things about this game, but I just feel like it's one of those things that people uh, just swing from the nuts of. For like, it just built up a certain amount of momentum, and people just went with it. Mm -hmm. All I mean, right. Which, which is not to say that it's a bad game. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, again, it's like. Oh, hold on, I'll be quiet while this goes. I don't know if there's anything. Okay, seeking our astral plane. You were gone. Cut off. I got it. Just like you wanted, right? This will help me fight the hiss. Uh-oh. Oh, there's a number of things. Well, come on, I can't break sheet metal. It can. Yeah, I mean, like, these I mechanics just picked up a piece of the like ground. really fun. Right, yeah, you can, yeah. Wow. Like, this, is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. People love these mechanics. Because, like, once you get to a certain point in this game, I mean, like, there's a lot of crazy physics and visuals and things going on. And, like, you know, it's very novel. Like, this yeah. stuff is... Well, I mean, you know. it's playing into some of the same stuff. Like, think of um, the guns from Half-Life and Portal that allow unique movement and unique physics. Gravity gun, right? It's fun for the same reasons, right? Yeah. I mean, but, but again, like, you know, most of the awards and most of the praise was, like, for, like, the gameplay, it seemed like. And then you saw and some you sporadic the hotline can be reached awards the for the narrative. And, and again, honestly, I, I really do assert that, like, nobody would be talking about this narrative were, were it not for all the other stuff. Yeah. But, One of the... Uh, 
one game if uh, that immediately comes to mind if you like this sort of like you know interacting with the environment physics you know like so right now what we've been seeing is fairly sort of sedated gameplay on my behalf i've only had options i've only been had access to the gun and the melee right but like yeah. now look how impressive the melee looks here yeah you know it's well, everything's I mean, exploding I mean, again, look at these physics like i mean th these are real i mean just uh woke elements are not like really cringy elements are not i mean like some of the mechanics in this game are like that's impressive like that is very well done and and this is again on like the lowest graphical settings yeah at 1080p uh this is 720p you know. <laughs> I'm okay right uh, wrong. yeah yeah i'm playing the game at I 720. Were... oh okay. yeah so i'm I rendering were... the game yeah. at 720. I... so this is 720p lowest settings looks yeah, pretty good I thought, yeah yeah it does yeah if you wanted an action-oriented game that also has this sort of you can shoot but you can also do physical stuff that feels really great one of the games that i really liked was um the darkness 2. did you ever play that i'm familiar with it i think i might have played a little bit of it but i don't remember it all that well yeah uh, now i never finished it i know that now if any of you guys see this and are interested in playing this if you go on the Epic Game Storm today, you can get it for free. As a general yes. rule, most of these large game companies are anti-white. So I wouldn't advise giving money to anyone unless, you know, you think there's some you think there's something worth supporting about them. But at least today, it's free. Well, the bad thing about Epic Games too is that Tencent and, and, and you know, is is a Chinese company and they're heavily involved in Epic Games and I suspect, I, I don't know this as a fact, but I suspect that they're pumping some money into Epic Games so that they can give out a lot of these games for free so that they can uh, attract traffic to the Epic Games store DRM mm -hmm. in, in place of other DRMs because, you know, it, it's very competitive in the DRM industries and, like, really one of the best ways you can, most effective ways, really, you can get new traffic is just to give stuff away. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you if you go to the Epic Games store and download the game for free, it's not that the developer gets no money. It might just be that it's going from Tencent to them rather than yeah. from you to them. So, I mean, right. if, you, if you were interested in this game, I would at least not pay for it yourself. <laughs> yeah, um, and the bad thing about getting free games from Epic, too, is that, you know, like, again, we're kind of supporting Tencent and Chinese companies. And Chinese companies, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, ripping and raring to be, like, anti-China. But, like, the fact of the matter is that, like, they're moving around the world buying up assets, buying up stuff, buying up mar uh, large segments of markets, buying up mineral rights. I mean, like they're yeah. they're going for it. You know what I mean? Like they're they're you know, like they're playing playing to win. And uh, if we're going to play to win too, <laughs> we can't get our free games from the Epic Games Store. <laughs> uh, you know, cuz like uh, Embargo said, somebody's going to well, right, I'll let I'll be quiet while you play that file if you want to play that real quick. Yeah. Whoops, that's the wrong key. You're listening to America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. If I move away from this, I won't be able to hear anymore. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy, thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicion Con. I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed. I don't know why this is so quiet, guys. I hope you can read the subtitles, okay? It, it's, it's not so quiet for me, I can hear it. He said guests had stayed there sleeping with the corpse of Foot Balone. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. 
I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. <laughs> no ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself. Under that would be freaky. Bed. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh. Wow. There you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange. Something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. So they oh, we'll be right back. They got this recording of a radio um, broadcast where they're talking like, "You maybe your toaster's possessed." You know, if no one else believes you, we will. And they are recording this and taking it for analysis to this very serious Bureau of Control. Again, reminds me very much of Men in Black, only in that, rather than yeah. radio broadcasts and people's toasters, yeah. it was of tabloids, right? And people saying they their cow had been abducted or they were anally probed, that kind of stuff. Same sort of um. mass entertainment being used as surveillance for real paranatural phenomena. It would kind of make sense too that people the people who made this game were probably in the age bracket that grew up uh where they were at an age like they were at an impressionable age point when men in black came out mm -hmm. um you know uh i mean probably an adolescent or um late teens yeah because men in black was like the late 90s and i just got a mm -hmm clearance card now so i can go into clearance one i don't even remember all the doors that i've been kept out of now and where i would find them yeah. it, this really isn't super relevant but i thought it was interesting and the guy talking about being uh, almost suffocated under the mattress reminded me of like this uh i think it was a bbc bbc series uh on like extremely obese people it was definitely in britain i don't know if it was BBC, but, uh, super fat versus super were... skinny no, oh. uh, I, uh, but but like they were just visiting very very obese people, and this one really obese, this bedridden guy, um, he, like a few weeks after they did the interview with him, he died, and like they did a follow up on on his death, and it was just like he, um, basically suffocated, like he basically woke up, they think, and he just sort of drowned while he was awake, like he just could no longer breathe, like his. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, but what was infuriating so i mean that was just really creepy to to hear and, and like you know it kind of reminded me of my uh well if anybody who's had any known anybody who's died from emphysema it's like kind of makes you think of that but only like you die because like you die of emphysema like effects because you're just so fat uh -huh. but um no what was really uh infuriating about it was that like he was bedridden and and therefore other people had to feed him yeah so it's just like other people like 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 i mean obviously he needed to take some kind of level of responsibility but it was like jesus why are these people why are his friends why are his loved ones like continually feeding him they have the power to like i mean yeah he'll be upset but like they have the power to make him stop eating for a while until he gets like thin enough that he's not bedridden and he'll have to feed himself i mean like I mean, in a lot of ways, these people, I would argue, are responsible for his death. Yeah. There's definitely I mean, some sort of aim assist with the, uh, of the, uh, with that thing, too. When you pick stuff up telekinetically, oh, yeah. there's an aim assist. And that, yeah, that's that part of what be. helps it feel so powerful, is right. that you almost always land your hit, right? It's almost always really satisfying. Right. No, that, that's a good observation. I mean, like, then that probably plays into why people really like this game, because the oh mechanics of it do feel very satisfying. Like, when you, like when you said, like, landing a hit, even though it's aim assist, it feels satisfying. That right there. Satisfying. 
it just does and Ooh. that's just gonna make people talk and talk and talk and talk about it yeah definitely I mean, Very how many physics games do people love where you just go around and blow stuff up and see the explosions? Everybody or... loves those games, you know? Everybody. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, people, let's say, when Minecraft was initially survival, and then the creative mode came out, and then you could just go around and build a couple of things and actually see what TNT was like and explode everything with TNT, because normally TNT is hard to get. And you, you people just mess around with that for hours. Um, Roger says, what's with the guys like hanging that. in the air? Well, they're infected by the hiss, but they're not actually soldiers. Um, we read about that earlier. Schmerling says, the darkness too. He didn't like the story and the unskippable low wa slow walking sections, but the gameplay was fun. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like the gameplay, like the satisfyingness of shooting, grabbing stuff, throwing it around. If you like that in this game, the darkness too is going to have a lot of that same sort of feel to like, if you really push forward and use all your abilities, you're going to get that feel. Um, uh, Lovester says, imagine having this amount of effort, technology, and innovation used in the creation of nationalist games and narratives. Exactly. I would love that. So, there's a bunch of stuff here that damages me. I can't go in here. Or maybe I can sneak around? Do I just have to not touch the goop? Uh, oh my god. No, no, there's something you have to do here. I don't okay. remember, but... Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at some of the things I found. Read up on what's happening here. Well, there's the floppy disk. You ever use an 8-inch floppy disk? I don't Broken? think I ever used a... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I don't... I know I use floppy disks, but I don't mm -hmm. have very vivid memories of using them. Okay. Like, I, I use them in school. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever had one at home, though. Confirmed data breach. On-site server experienced an intrusion by unauthorized users. After a thorough investigation, it was confirmed that the user had only accessed a video file which contained portions of various Dr. Darling presentations. Investigators were able to track the user through the IP address. The following are confirmed identities, identities of, these, of these users. Huh. So there's a bunch of people. Interesting. Were you going to say something? Uh, uh, how big is a floppy disk normally, or was? So, I mean, I the one that he showed that's, in the video was 8 huge. inches. That was the, the the big 8 inch floppy disk at... I've never used an 8 inch floppy disk. When I was a kid, my father had purchased a computer, and on that we used the 5 and a quarter inch okay. floppy disks. Yeah, I was going to say five, about 5. Yeah, but yeah, because, you know, that's, um, that's why the, uh... The, uh, the 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 spaces where you put the optical drives and all of that. I mean, that's why all that stuff's like five and a quarter inch mm -hmm. all the time. Like, cause like you know those docks. Uh, I actually have a my second rig. I have a, a Cooler Master nine thirty two half, and um, it has an optical drive in it. I don't use it, mm -hmm. but uh, it has all these docks for other five and a quarter inch devices and i would really like to get bracket adapters so i can stick a bunch of other hard drives in there yeah because as it stands they can't mount mm -hmm. but i'm having a horrible time finding uh I, I i'm having a horrible time finding anything i know there's got to be something somewhere I mean, yeah well and uh then you eventually came out with the smaller floppy disks the uh three and a half inch floppy disks and that's why you ended up with those smaller floppy drives that were smaller than yeah. the cd drives and the optical mm -hmm. drives. What's this? This is, uh, pay attention. This is the last time I'm explaining this. Internal lockdowns are manually triggered events that lock one or all of the sectors by restricting the use of the sector elevator, effectively locking staff in their sector until the emergency is handled. Okay. External lockdowns are a bigger deal. So this was internal when we looked at the computers and came in here. Um, nothing in, in or out of the whole building. It's triggered by code red containment breach based on some complicated system that security and research s uh, slap together. Well, that's... I don't want to hear that it's slapped together. Blah, blah, blah. I know it's confusing as hell. I told Darling a hundred times to change it, but they're adamant it stays this way. 
Okay. Multimedia? Okay, that's just the radio program. You should Google um, this game and Men in Black. See if even the developers maybe have talked about a connection between this and Men in Black. Because I feel it. Seems obvious to me, but I could, I've been wrong before. Oh, giant room. Oh, and the door closes behind me, so boss time. Ooh. What the hell's that thing? Defeat his corrupted Kamasi. Oh, this is the this is one of the leaders. What's? Oh, he he dodges. I don't feel so powerful if everyone's going to dodge my stuff. Get out of here. What's not I guess what feels good about playing this too is um, whenever you press E to grab something, there's almost always something to grab. Oh, I think I hit him. I think if you grab two things in quick succession, you might hit him. Oh, goodness. I got no health. Well. Um, I don't see anything... Uh, yeah, I don't see anything popping up. I mean, th that doesn't rule it out. Like, I mean, there's pro there might be some, like, weird interview they d one of the developers did somewhere that... In in wherein, you know, they talk about Men in Black, but... Uh, I don't I don't see anything readily popping, popping up in any searches. Am I going through the top floor? Oh, no, this is the same door. All right. Back to the boss. I don't know what's the best way to attack this boss. That hit him. So I think you have to just do twice in a row with your thing. Uh, I remember sometimes there's a way you can hit them every time if you time it right. Oh, deal with this guy. Let's get rid of that thing. I mean, just just look at that. You I mean you can see how anybody who loves physics-based games is just gonna go crazy for this. Yeah, definitely. He's, he's I got a good chunk of his health down. So he's see, he always gets hit by the second one. Yeah, I know, but I could have sworn there is some way to hit them on the first. I don't know, it doesn't matter, really. Well, I already got a winning strategy, so... I feel like he's gonna move... And then not. Uh-oh. This guy. You killed me last time. You jerk. Where is he? Whoa! He's running! Got his health low, and now he's trying to bail. What's that? Oh, a hole in the... I have a feeling he'll be back. Oh. Well. Unless okay. Unless you focused. The hotline should be past the mailroom. All right. Game is helping remind me what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. Since it is somewhat just jointed feeling. Uh, tea time. I mean, again, I know people will think I'm... Uh, well, I'll let you go through this, sir. Tea time is at 7. I'll see you on the course Sunday morning. By the way, have you heard about the Tennyson Report? Apparently, there's a bunch of copies drifting around the office. Trench is looking to get his hands on any information about who wrote it. Okay, so apparently there's a... What is it? Tennyson Report we can keep an eye out that Trench wanted to get his hand... Or Trench... I want to get his hands on the person who wrote it. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, I feel like the whole, like, female protagonist saving her brother, all these other female, like, strong females with, like, like, kind of chiseled jaw lines and male hairline. You know, like, I feel like there's something weird going on with this, and I don't know if it was deliberate, but, like, over time, it definitely feels like, uh... 
this is downstream of you know cultural shift like you know like got to make women more masculine and we got to make men more feminine <laughs> uh although this game i don't recall there being any instances in which like the men are particularly feminine uh but i, I haven't played i don't remember this game that well but you know uh um Laura, the Tomb Raider, or whatever, like the reboots, it, th those are kind of weird because she's still like super sexy, super attractive. Um, but they do make a lot of the guys around her like, like basically wimps. Um, well, then again, eh, th th there's there's a lot of masculine guys in that. I don't know if that's really what's going on with that. Hmm. But uh, I mean, you can a... see in the menu, we have a, I don't know what this is called, but if you look down here, we can deconstruct things to get more of it. Yeah. And when we die, we lose some of it and respawn. So it's, we have like a currency. Can you deconstruct Western civilization to get more of something else? Hmm. All right, take this down. The situation in Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness affecting the staff at the U.S. Embassy in Havana was caused by sonic weaponry in the hands of a foreign power. Numerous personnel have damage to the inner ear, but most are expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged their cellular walls, but we can't blame that on some stupid noise gun. <laughs> Thank God no local doctors examined them first. Honestly, what are the odds an altered item would show up inside a U.S. Embassy? Talk about good luck, huh? <laughs> so much easier to... Hey, are you still recording this? No. Oh. Okay. What was that supposed to be? Well, it had to do with the investigation of an altered uh, world event. I don't know who he was supposed to be talking to. Uh, let's see here. Multimedia, it says... Tomasi, that was the guy we fought. The AWE report. What's this? Elevated? Oh, that was Tomasi, the guy we fought. So there's his codex entry. Battle summary. AWE 17. A spate of disappearances was traced to a home in the city of Butte where uh, bureau agents discovered a translocative light switch cord. Bureau agents arrived at the home of a local celebrity located at, which had been connected to the total of a certain number of disappearances in the area. Agents found no one inside. While searching the closet, an agent pulled on the light switch cord and disappeared from view. Another agent was selected to pull the cord and over to replicate the event he disappeared as well. Both agents were discovered at the oldest house some days later, found in a sealed room by uh, rangers exploring a new area of the house. Light switch cord in Butte's home closet disappeared during this incident. Oh, so the thing is gone too. Hotline chamber. Oh. The hotline can't be far now. Now let's find this hotline because we were supposed to have Hotline as a secure contact to somebody. And that's what Trench, the dead guy, told us to do. Uh, Michael K says the na narrative design says they took from X-Files and Twin Peaks. Okay. Again, I, I can't help but feel that the, the parallels to Men in Black is significant, but... Uh, well, it's not like Men in Black was super, super unique in exactly. that regard. You know, like, uh, there were a lot of things that led up to that. Mm-hmm. All right, let's... Who's this? So, okay. uh, intellectual property cognate. <laughs> we'll call it that. There's a metal detector here. Director use only. Director only after this line. Well, here I am. I'm the director. Oh yeah, because this is the hotline chamber. Let's take a look at the two things we picked up. We picked up hotline security log, director trench, director tense, Bill Everett. Uh, was it Everett? Uh, custodian? Custodian? Carol Bishop. 
Okay, what's, uh, let's see here. This is... This is chronologically with the oldest events at the top. So, who's Carol Bishop? Brand new custodian? Out of nowhere? Hmm. Interesting. Butte supplement? How many, how many, how many female custodians? Well, actually, you know what? I've, I've come across a few. Well, I mean, like, uh, usually, usually female custodians are like in, in like, uh, like housekeeping, but mm -hmm. like, you know, usually like you don't think of like a custodian, like a, like a janitor and like a public building as being a, a woman usually. I don't know. I don't know. I have that in my mind for some reason. According to their testimony, the agents had been transported from the Butte home to a roadside motel and discovered a room key by performing a ritual. The key opened a door marked with an inverted black pyramid, which is what we've been seeing all around here, which they only learned after a lengthy period of trial and error. While pulling another motel cord found inside this room, they were transported to the oldest house. Okay, so they, they didn't pull on the cord in Butte and get transported to the oldest house. They got transported somewhere else and then were able to get transported to the oldest house. The disappearance of the home's owner and the other locals of Butte have been attributed to the light switch cord. The Ocean View Motel is known to have many doors and pathways. Since the occurrence, identical light switch cords to be found in Butte homes are in it. To the one found in the Butte home have begun appearing throughout the oldest house. Oh. Certain number of light switch cords have been found in the oldest house located at in whatever sectors these all access the ocean view motel so they all lead from the oldest house to the ocean view motel interesting multimedia yeah we're good so people are asking in chat uh zeifler uh x -Sly says how's it going i think it's going well um Shmerly wants me to say redacted instead of filling in or skipping. I could do that if you really want. X wants to know, is this game a masterpiece or subversive? subversive? Tomato wants to way say, Tomato Way says, you like this game or not? Well, Krogan, what do you think of this game? Before we talk to the hotline. I would say... I mean, I've already said, like, I... I, I I, I think um, it has some like it's it's down it's it's downstream of some like like kind of woke cultural shift, but I don't think anybody at the at the studio or yeah I don't think anybody at the studio intentionally set out to do anything quote unquote subversive. I just mm -hmm. think it's a lot of the stuff going on is just downstream of nonsense. That's all. Uh, I don't think it I personally don't think it was a great game like I think it was like really overrated I think the physics and the aesthetics are really 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 good but like the story uh, the progression system and all of that like I, I didn't find any of that to be good like you know so I think it uh, in terms of gameplay it has it's very very strong it has some really strong points and it has some really weak points uh, and uh any quote unquote subversive elements it has are just not intentional. They're just downstream of larger culture. That, that's what I would say. Here's what I'd say Could there be subversive things later in the game that I haven't encountered? Certainly could be. Nothing big in terms of subversion so far. And I'd say it's more, you know, if you had to pick one, right? Masterpiece of subversive, I'd say it's more towards the masterpiece side. Um, I like, we're. We're, I'm not reading all these things. Like, I'm not going to read about every little thing about of the enemies that I already just fought. Because that's boring and annoying, and there's way too much written on those. But to hear about, like, in Butte, which is when Montana, right? To hear, like, to read these sort of neat little things about, well, there was an AWE in this part of the world, and they wrote this kind of neat story about a light switch that would transport you... And they thought it brought you here, but it actually brought you to the Ocean View Motel. And then, you know, to here, and they had to do these rituals. I'd say it's pretty fun for me to read about these interesting stories they wrote. 
this sort yeah, of just, X-Files stuff, um, this sort of setting, all the things. And I'd say when I'm not reading that, when I do have to actually, when I'm not reading that, when I'm not listening to these things about the, mm -hmm. um, when I'm not listening to or watching the video about the uh, eight inch floppy disk that contains nuclear codes of the Soviets, but also lets you do telekinesis. When I'm not doing that and I'm actually like playing the game, the game plays all right, right? Um, so, I don't know. I feel like but those are the two experiences, right? You're either delving into the lore, into the setting, or you're playing the game. And I feel like the lore and setting is interesting, and the gameplay works. I think that this was heavily inspired by Stranger Things as well. Like, I'm, I'm looking oh, yeah. at uh, the timeline of, like, when Stranger Things came out. Uh, and, uh, obviously this game went into development before Stranger Things launched, but I, I doubt that, uh, Stranger Things launched and that the people making this game did not watch it and internalize some of the Well, and how many, and what are the exact, what are the, uh, what are all the Stranger Things, um, influencers that came before it? You know, it could just be all right. the same I mean, influences prior to that. intellectual property cognates, like, yeah. like I said, you know what I mean? Like, there could be, like, you know, a common ancestor, uh, and, and there really is. It's not like Stranger Things was, like, the first thing that dealt with, uh, what it deals with. You know, it, it kind of ties into, like, this 80s nostalgia, um, paranormal activities, uh, MMK Ultra experimentation, um, secret government labs within like you know the department of energy or whatever uh like you know th th those are things that everybody has been dealt with in one way or another before hmm. in uh media but um yeah i mean i, I don't know man i i still feel like I still feel like this game's highly overrated <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, yeah i'm gonna Stick to my guns there. No, Drathia says, F the Epic Game Store. I refuse to give them any time or money. Bravo! I bought this game on PS4 and then Steam once the year exclusivity deal was over. Oh, okay. I, I, I retract my Bravo. <laughs> um, Jacob wants to know if I've s read or seen a video about SCP. I don't know what SCP is. Um, Tomato Way says, I want your opinion on the Hitman reboot trilogy. I liked it very much. Sad if it's woke too. I've never played any of the Hitman games. Neither have I. Okay, let's see what this... What's going on here with the, uh... What the hell? Mind the gap? Yeah, it looks like a pretty big gap, huh? Are you gonna mind it? Yeah, I'm minding turn. it now. That's why I haven't jumped turn. across. Ocean turn, View turn Motel around. and Casino Entry Point. There we got that Ocean View Hotel Motel again. Oh, wait. I, I, well, either either you have to turn around here and see what's behind you, or you have to keep hitting the switch. The well, it says the law applies. of three yeah, applies. Yeah. Yeah. So, oops. That's the wrong button. <laughs> Two. Whoa. Have we been here before? Yeah, no. now you have to go search all these rooms for a key and some weird stuff There's a lot of roadside happens. motels across the country. On the road, on the run, under the radar. This feels like all of them. Like something recognized from a dream. Bing. Hello? Anyone here? There's never anyone here at the reception desk when I enter a building. That does do something. Okay, well, I hit it three times. The uh, rule of three. It, 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 go, go into the room down the hall. The one that I just came from? No. Oh, the new hallway? Yeah. It, that that bell hit, changes something in one of these rooms. Is it just the room that's open? Probably. Let me see here. The key has a black pyramid on it. The key has a black pyramid on it. Now can I go straight back to the room that was locked? Probably. <laughs> oh. I mean, I, I don't remember this super well. I mean... A row? Here we got another one of these. Oh, 
Is this a rule of three as well? Probably. Oh, hey. Now we got a pathway to the hotline. Hello, Pizza Hut. Oh, another astral plane challenge. Um, Jacob says secure contained project fictional writings in the form of documentation by a fictional organization. Oh, never heard of it. Um, Michael K says this must be that award winning music. You mean that constant ringing? <laughs> I, I don't like, I know one of the awards they got was for music. Right. And I don't hear, I don't. I haven't yeah. heard hardly any it, music this, this whole time. This, this, this is this is what I'm saying. I, I think that like once certain this happens Holy with anything, shit. like with like a, an album or a movie or a TV show. Like once any kind of media like hits a certain kind of critical mass, I mean people just kind of get carried away with giving it awards. Yeah. Uh, but that said, I do think that there are some segments in this game where the where the musical score is pretty good. Like there there are like this. The quote-unquote music you're hearing the whole time, like there, there is like there is like. But, what uh, the hell is this I damn mean, thing? Um. Uh, oh, I think it's dead. Oh, I know. It's up. It's up. Why don't you go? Why don't you go run up to it? Give it a hug. Well, it's got a red. Okay. I have a red uh, reticle yeah, or a crosshair well, you, when I go, point at it. Why don't you go closer? Well, I. I'd rather just kill it from here if I can. I don't know that you have to kill it. To talk to it. But the, why was my crosshair red if it's not supposed to die? Okay. Alright. You sit here doing this. Alright, chill out. I'm not, I'm not wigging out. I'm just saying. I mean, you can. I don't think. Uh... I hit it. I heard the hit sound. Oh, there's a gap there. Good thing I didn't fall through the gap. Oh, I thought I saw something over here. Jesus. Oh my oh, god. Kill you. you get a run. Oh. <laughs> uh, I think just have to run up. by it. Yeah. Uh, I think there, the, you, eventually there are ways you can get rid of those things, but I think right now you can't. I think They remind right me of the big you... fuzzies from uh, Super Mario 2. <laughs> That's uh, peculiar. <laughs> well, you remember the fuzzies from Super Mario 2? No, the... but it sounds odd. The big fuzzies. Well, they're not. Uh, oh, big, no, big. I do remember that. I do remember that, like, very yeah. vaguely. <laughs> well done, Dial Director. You can contact us in the Hotline Collectibles Memo. We expect weekly calls. Great. Now I have, like, actual work to do. We have still haven't negotiated my it salary yet. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is, under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. A row? A director needs a team. My management team. These people know Fart the Z. secrets of Fart the Bureau Z. as Fart well Z. as Fart I Z. do. Some even better. Cigarettes. Darling, Silhouettes. Salvador. Marshall. <laughs> Marshall especially. Lights behind my Silhouettes. head of operations. She sees right through me. She knows I don't like relying on people. The only person you should fail is yourself. Okay. But things change when you become director. Uh, that's it? We're done? I'm gonna hang up now? Why is my character hanging mm. up? Mm. Nosebleed? <gasps> Nosebleed! It's all the cocaine that'll do that to you. Well, listen to him. He my phone's gone. Like an echo. An echo with important info. An echo with important info. I need to get back to Emily. People react strongly when I tell them about you. Is it too soon to tell Emily? 
she might be able to help. Oh, so Why would it be too soon to tell her about the weird thing that you're talking to in your head? I mean, like, look what's going on around you. Like, why would Emily have... I mean, you've already told Emily that you constantly see dead people. Yeah. You know, you see the dead director. Like, I, 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 I mean, if you tell her that there's this thing you talk to inside your head, in addition to the dead person you see, I don't think she's gonna, you know, like, wig out or anything. To all executive staff, I know there is some concern regarding our operations exceeding the annual budget. So long as we operate within the oldest house, we are obscured from scrutiny in many respects. If our budget demands are not exorbitant to the point of drawing attention, then they will be granted by the U.S. Treasury without question. The Federal Bureau of Control is just another line in another spreadsheet that some lowly accountant won't even notice. Their eyes will skip over us as if we weren't even there. The nature of the oldest house allows us certain freedoms in how we operate. Our being here is no accident. Oh, well, that's kind of neat. What's, oh, there's the hotline. I don't have to go through the bullshit of pulling the phone again. Wait a second here. Hotline, management team, Ocean View Motel, the coming storm? Okay. Something's coming. The whispers growing louder. Uh huh. The worst winter storm in bureau history. Worst winter storm. Retribution for my sins. Our sins. This threat could destroy the bureau, everything I've built. Destroy me. A web spun, turning this place against me. I catch glimpses of it in the corner of my eye. It's just out of reach. Elusive. Okay. <laughs> it's clever. A perverse <laughs> game of hide and seek. Is this part of an attack? Obfuscating the facts. Dimming my eyes. It's hard to tell. This is incredibly quiet for me. I need answers. I haven't heard back I need from answers. Darling. I haven't I heard back from Darling! Friend, my closest ally. I think we made a terrible <laughs> mistake all those years ago. Made a terrible studies mistake is us all in danger. having endless silhouettes. It's my duty as cigarette smoke the bureau safe. It'll be difficult. Graspy voices. What's done can't be undone. There's no easy fix. Magical thinking is a requirement of just survival. <laughs> Pain and suffering are mandatory. I'm sorry. <laughs> to change things, you have to break yourself. I don't know if I have the strength. I'm old and weak. I'm afraid. I don't like this. Hand is <laughs> <laughs> I think it's silly. It's just like he's losing control. All right. I am not going to listen to these other ones. That's for damn yes, sure. Yes, you are. Yes, What's you are. This She's board, on the phone. Though? So She's this is trench. The this there's one from the board. This one's only 18 seconds. You're the director now. We expect independence slash dependence. Okay. You are authority slash chosen one. Oh boy. I'm the special gamer. Special gamer coming through. I've been selected. And you're you're living out your you statistically are probably a male. You know, being chosen female. <laughs> yeah. Which is just kind of weird. Uh, again, I think it's just downstream of other stuff, but it's just kind of, it's kind of weird. You know, I, I feel like most young male gamers should be playing as men. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to be like too like uh, militant in, in so far that like, I, you know, I think it's possible Jesse, for you you know, either I mean, sex to, to the play as the other sex and it'd be totally fine. Sorry. Like, I don't, you made it. not like, oh God, Emily's talking, Emily? I should shut up. Let's talk, of course. What's this? Or, uh, do you, maybe it's, uh, it's, uh, nine o'clock? Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Okay. So, um. You weren't aware I had to tell you. Let's see here. Research and records. Initial impressions. 
Our initial encounters with the entity known as the Hiss have revealed various behavioral facts, most notably that the Hiss is able to invade and corrupt control points, altered items, and even humans radically change their behavior. Curiously, any person wearing one of the HRA devices that Dr. Darlene has distributed over the past weeks is not affected by the corruption. The only known exception to this fact is the director. Uh-huh, that's us. Special gamer. Uh, ba ba ba. Well. Case files? Hotline? Okay. Oh! Yeah, case files for the hotline. Inaccessible except for the director. 1960s era red Bakelite telephone. Yeah, a Bakelite telephone is a object of power. <laughs> Rotary dial is placed with a black knob of unknown purpose. We have redacted the phone's weight. Uh, Josie says, kind of reminds me of the elusive man from Mass Effect. Oh yeah, they both smoke in, you know, shadowy figures. <laughs> That's um, what I'm saying. Like, Schmerling this, says this... the voice actor is voiced uh, Max Payne. Yeah, I could tell that right away. Yeah, I yeah, love the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the original yeah. two Max Payne games. As I said, same... Max Payne 3 was one of my greatest disappointments. Yeah, same studio, same guys. Um, so, uh, they also made Alan Wake. Uh... But yeah, I mean, like, I, there are a lot of pieces of media that do this, but this just seems like, I mean, for as many unique things as this game does, it does also seem like this sort of smorgasbord, like, uh, um, assembly of cliches, you mm -hmm. know, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, even the X-Files were kind of like that, you know, yeah. like, uh, like everybody acts like the smoking man was like unique to the x-files it's like not nah, really no <laughs> um let's see here x sly says off topic but what would you say if you were king would you have the ideal one way one could get a, a career like do we spend too much time in school too little um, that's, uh, we could address that on Saturday. If you're around on Saturday, ask, ask that sort of question, we'll talk about it. Um. We're working to install Josie's... Jared Taylor as king of the United States. Yeah. <laughs> Josie says, hi, Embargo, <laughs> you should have on a paper perspective. H-A, I don't know what you're saying there. H a p a p e r s p e c i t i v e. Looks like I guess that's a content paper creator? perspective. I don't know. Um. Well, let's uh, tell her what we've done, and then we'll be done for the day. I got the hotline. I got I the hotline. I can make out what Judge is saying now. Incredible. What did he say? He talked about his management team, people who knew the bureau of secrets. Your boss, darling. Tomasi, but he's gone. He has gone. Salvador? He's the head of security. And Marshall? Helen Marshall is head of operations. She's tough, ex-CIA. She took her rangers and went to the research sector to secure the HRA production. She hasn't come back. Someone who could help us. The other sectors. How do I get there? It's impossible because of the internal lockdown. You can perform a directorial override to lift it, but that can only be done in the maintenance sector. Normally, you take the sector elevator down there. It connects all the sectors, but it won't work while the lockdown is in effect. We already got past one lockdown. Maybe I can find the way. Jesse, look, with no prep, no training in this extreme situation you are doing phenomenally well i am All the special gamer seem to affect you i mean i would love to run some tests on you if you agree that is was it time to tell her about we my special friend something that would help us tests i don't know she might find out about you tell her but i wouldn't mind understanding more myself oh okay if you think it will help Great. 
I'll check the internal documentation for any lockdown bypasses. We need to get these sectors open to locate Darling and Marshall. And I'll look for a way inside the maintenance sector. The sooner we find one, the sooner I reach this override. Emily Pope kind of sounds like a British person trying to fake an American accent. <laughs> you should uh, see who her voice actress is. Maybe she is. I, I don't. I think it's she's supposed to. She's trying to sound like like masculine author, author like masculinely authoritative, mm -hmm. and like that kind of alters the feminine voice a little bit. Sound yeah. kind of funny. But let me look up. Uh, Whoops. Department of Maintenance. Uh, Shmerlin says, what's your preferred donation method? I'd say Cash App. I can write that in a second. Tell you what the name is on there. And with Cash App, you can write a message on there if you want me to read something. I, if you send me something on Cash App I, and you write a message, I'm just going to assume you want me to read the message on stream. So, don't include anything you don't want to include it. Oh. This is a spooky place. Oh. Well. Mission completed. Uh, I'll put it in chat here. Whoops. The wrong thing. So... Yeah, that should be that. But yeah, it's just the dollar sign intellectual embargo. Well, that's how the cash app naming convention thing works. So they, they put the dollar sign at the beginning. Let's see if she has any wow. more dialogue. She's an English actress. She's she's English. Okay. She's English. Oh wow, I hit the nail on the head. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. You uh, found her out, Kroger. I found her out. Sorry. No, I was just surprised. I didn't really think it would be that. Yeah. But it is. It, it's it's like that. Like, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like, yeah. uh, I'm sure I'll have more questions. It soon. sounds like they got something stuck Just in their throat. Just let me know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the, the, she has no new dialogue options for me. Do you hear that? Um, Someone's uh, another act, English Where's actor who uh, really shows that up is uh, the Alien Covenant. I forget the actor's name, but he plays uh, David. Uh, the uh, the android, Seems and then like um, the elevator. Walter, I think. Like, there are two versions of the android, and the one's supposed to be an American accent, accent and one of one's supposed to be an English accent, and one, and when he does the American accent in one, it's, like, very, very obvious that he's an Englishman doing an American accent. It's, like, as bad as uh, Keanu Reeves trying to do an English accent, <laughs> but in reverse. Work, meet me in the uh, janitor is singing to us. Time to work. Uh, meet me in the maintenance. So, I am done for the day. We've played this for two hours. We've become the director. Uh, it's a fairly interesting game. You know, I think there's potentially a lot to this game in terms of commenting on the various uh, influences, things like X-Files, right? And all that sort of stuff. That being said, it might not be the sort of typical Wednesday game where we get to comment a lot, uh, like harshly on a lot of political themes. Um, so, I'll run a poll on Twitter. Next week, we'll either continue this game or we'll stop playing this game and instead we'll play Democracy. Which Democracy? Uh, three or four? I don't know yet. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to quit for now. Fuck. I'm going to post a poll on Twitter. We'll either play this on Wednesday or we'll, we'll play, we'll go back to more hardcore political games like Democracy, and that'll <laughs> contain a lot more direct commentary on what developers are putting in games in terms of political and social ideas. Well, you got anything to say before we go, Krogan? Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, uh, I guess just kind of, once again, sort of a silly game. 
good aesthetics, good physics, mm -hmm. think it's overrated, anything subversive in it is like a lot of other things, just downstream of the larger culture, which, I, you know, I, I guess I do want to say something like in regards to that, like that's as nationalists, that's probably like where most of like a good chunk of our, our labor going forward uh, is going to be redirecting or pushing back against like the casual, like uh, the casual uh, shifts in culture. Um, Cause it, it's, it's like, it's pretty easy to, to, to push back against stuff. That's like uh, very overtly or mostly overtly hostile. Cause you know, you can point that out to people and you can say, you can show them, Oh, this is really hostile. But if something's just kind of like passive, and and downstream and not really that big of a deal. It's kind of hard to get people to be like, eh, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe you shouldn't really push that because you know it's like, you know, people just tend to focus on stuff that's uh, more in your face and overt. Yeah. Anyway, that's all. I'll put it on Twitter. Um, you know, we could always um, if people like okay, you if let's say control loses and we go back to playing real stuff that we can really comment on in a significant way. I could still potentially play some control on stream on a different day, maybe on Thursday or something. We could have some fairly chill streams just hanging out and seeing what the game has to offer, but uh I'm I'm going to put it to a poll on my Twitter. Okay. Well, that's about it. Um Josie, as far as a uh, Hapa perspective, pro uh you say he's a white positive biracial guy. Um you know, I don't know if he knows who I am. You know, I I don't know him. I mean, if you know he knows of me and he wants to talk to me, we can talk. But, uh, yeah, I don't know him. Um, he can always reach out to me. I got the uh, Proton Mail that you can find on my About page on my YouTube channel, on my main YouTube channel, or even just DM me on Twitter. But uh, I'm putting that uh, Twitter poll up right now. Thanks, for showing up everybody i'll see you this weekend on saturday and that'll be at 3 p.m eastern standard time peace out have a good one